I have a theory that waterproof inks dry out in pens faster than non-waterproof inks. What say you? Um, so as a generalization, which I always hate to do, but I do it constantly anyway, um, I would say that's probably true as a generalization. Now, there are different types of waterproof inks out there that can perform very differently. So really what I'm talking about here is inks that are made to be water resistant when they're on paper. So it's not necessarily, I mean, it's, it's kind of just kind of funny because all of these inks use water in the process. So there's some kind of reaction that's happening on the paper that's causing it to become waterproof. So because there are different types of these waterproof inks, you may experience different levels of them drying out in your pen because it's not the relationship between the ink and your pen that's causing that waterproofness. It's a relationship between the ink and the paper, really the fiber in the paper. So it's not like because it's permanent ink or because it's waterproof ink, it's definitely going to be more of an issue in my pen. I think that it happens to coincide that way sometimes as a generalization. So because you don't necessarily know which of those waterproof inks are going to perhaps be a little more maintenance and dry out a little bit more, it's good to approach all of them as if they will from a maintenance perspective. That way you are um, you know, not caught kind of blindsided by a, an ink that can then cause trouble. Because I will say a couple of them, if you leave them in and they dry out, can really be more of a pain to clean out. So it's a good idea to treat most waterproof inks as if they're going to be more trouble than dry out. And you know, use them more regularly, clean them thoroughly, clean them more often. That is that is really where I would I would stay with all those. So really there's three main types of waterproof fountain pen inks that I can think of off the top of my head. Not off the top of my head, I thought about it for a few minutes, but um, you have iron gall inks, which are not super popular today, but that was the original kind of waterproof ink. Um, the oldest that they have is on the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is the oldest written thing that they have. Um, so what was the Dead Sea Scrolls, like 5,000 years old or something like that? Pretty old. 3,000? Oh gosh, I should look that up. Why did I even go down that road? I didn't even need to say the years. If I had intended on saying that, I would have looked it up ahead of time. Anyway. You guys will correct me in the comments. <laughs> or you can Google it. It's on Wikipedia somewhere. Um, so there's that. Iron gall inks. Modern iron gall inks are not pure iron gall. Pure iron gall inks are pretty dry and can be troublesome in your pens. Uh, the modern ones, though, are just a water, you know, kind of a, I don't know, watered down is a, a loose term that I'm using here. I don't know if that's technically what it is, but it's a reformulated version of iron gall that, yes, it will oxidize and be permanent on the page, but it's not going to be as corrosive in your pen as traditional iron gall inks have been. Um, there's cellulose reactive inks, such as Noodler's, which is really, it's kind of a conventional ink until it bonds with a cellulosic material, such as wood pulp and paper or cotton fiber. Um, that's when it really bonds to those. It takes a little while, but once it bonds to them, it will not go away. So, uh, but it makes no difference usually what other material it's on, as long as there's no cellulose on it, um, it's in pretty good shape. And then the last one is pigmented inks. So not a whole ton of these ones either, but things like platinum carbon black, platinum pigmented blue, the Sailor Nano inks, um, those have pigments in them that dry basically on the surface of the paper. Those ones are actually, the, the, the iron gall and the pigmented inks are the ones that you really don't want to like dry out in your pen because they're really more of a pain to clean out. The new those inks are not so bad, you know, because they're, they're cellulose reactive. They really only react on the page. Um, with that cellulosic fiber. And so the Noodler's ones are a little more hit or miss. Some of the, some of the Noodler's inks can be, can be drier. I don't necessarily, I don't even know necessarily if it's related to the waterproofness factor of the ink, because there's certain ones like, you know, Noodler's Black Eel, for example, which is a lubricated permanent black ink that actually is a really good, you know, doesn't dry quickly at all. Um, so it's, it really kind of depends. That's the Noodler's ones, the cellulose reactive ones are the ones that probably vary the most in terms of how dry or, or um, whatnot, whatnot they are in your pen. 
but the iron gall and the pigmented ones, I would say definitely those will dry out more, and if they do, they're a pain to clean out. So as a general rule, I would approach all of them and say really, the iron gall and the, the other ones, like especially if you know that pen is prone to drying out more anyway, clean it out like every three or four days. Like really clean it out pretty often. Maybe wait a week if you have to. The new there's ones you maybe don't have to wait quite as long, but it's also gonna depend a lot on the pen and how well it seals and stuff like that. So again, I'm generalizing, but that's a pretty good, pretty good approach.